Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's Devin back again. And I was just sitting here thinking about David and Goliath, right? Obviously, we know the story that David defeated Goliath. He had a um, slingshot with uh, three smooth stones and he shot it at, the, at Goliath's forehead. It knocked him over completely. And then he, you know, rose up, took Goliath's weapon and chopped his head off, right? We know that. However, I want to give you guys a new perspective because I've been seeing a lot of people on YouTube channels, videos, you know, people that call themselves chosen ones and we're the chosen ones and they're the chosen ones and all this other stuff. Now, to me, I don't like that term. I know that the Bible says in one passage that it says we're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. But I still never refer to myself as a chosen one. I just say I'm a believer or I'm a Christian because to be Christian is to be Christ like. So I follow Christ, you know, and I choose humility. Christ never referred to himself as a chosen one. The only time he referred to himself as these different titles was to fulfill the prophecy, right? Son of man, right? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. But that wasn't the main part of his ministry. The main part was the works and the behavior and his, the way he lived his life. Then if they couldn't believe it, then, you know, let me come from the prophecies. Let me connect these things for you so you can understand it. But just coming back to David and Goliath to make this thing make sense is that I see these videos and these people, they talk about demons, they talk about demonic oppression, they talk about spiritual warfare. And number one, they talk about it as if you have no, no way to win. They talk about it as if demons or devils have influence or power over a believer. Now, what I mean by this is if you're in sin, if you're living in sin and you have not repented, the devil has power over you. Because you have an open door and you're allowing that to happen. However, if you have repented truthfully before God, the, the devil has no power over you. Because the Holy Spirit, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the issue is when I see these videos is that some people have these videos where they talk about, you know, demonic influence. People are demons around me. People have done this. People have done that. And they have these different characteristics that they're listing about so-called demons. And then... The first of all, like that's not biblical because Ephesians chapter six tells us exactly who demons are and what they are. It tells us very clearly that we do not fight against flesh and blood. So for you to call someone a demon, that's already wrong. That's already an error. That person is still a person. They're just under the influence of a demon. Now, can a person be possessed by a demon? Yes, but they're still Kathy. They're still Sue. They're still Bobby. It's just Bobby that's possessed by this unclean spirit. This is why when Jesus got off the boat and he saw that there was demonic oppression in a certain town, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. He wasn't going to war with the people. He was moved with compassion because he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. They needed to be healed. They needed to be set free. They needed to be guided and taught what's the right thing to do so that they can never come into those conditions again. A.K.A. why he says, go and sin no more. Because now you know the effects of sin and what it does to you. So go and sin no more. And then even in one instance, he says, go and sin no more, lest something worse comes upon you. So coming back to these videos, and it's like, it's like, it's kind of like Elijah, right? Elijah's fighting Jezebel and Elijah, she says, you know, she, 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 she swore to God. Basically, she swore to God that because Elijah had killed 400 of her prophets on Mount Carmel, she swore to her God that she says, basically, um, basically, I, I don't want to, I can't say the whole scripture because I don't remember it word for word, but the gist of it was, Elijah, I'm going to do you the same way that you just did my 400 prophets. And once he heard that word, once word got back to him, he's immediately in fear. So he, he reacted the same exact way that a lot of those people on these videos are reacting. Because like when I watch these videos, I don't necessarily watch them all. I click on it and I go to the comment section to see what the reactions are. Like, what are people saying? Because I want to see if somebody's going to bring up scripture. Somebody's going to say, well, where's the scripture of this? Like, where, where's the scriptural background to this? Where's the backing to back this up to make it valid? And nobody ever does it. And I'm just like, okay. So let me be the one. Let me be the bearer of bad news. Let me come into this comment section. Let me set people straight. At least as much as I can. So that's why I'm making this video. Because I'm like, I'm seeing people that are doing things the wrong way. And they're in error. And they're teaching error. Because of their fear. Basically, they're doing what Elijah did. Jezebel threatens them. And instead of realizing the power of God is greater in you than anything that's in the world, you get scared. 
So God can no longer use you because of your fear. So now you have to go anoint a new prophet so God can swoop, swoop down and take you into heaven. Like that's the reason why Elijah is in heaven right now. He didn't die a hero's death. That was cowardice. God gave him grace for his cowardice. But let's not forget in the New Testament what the book of Revelation tells us. Every coward shall have a part in the lake of fire. So this is not a thing to expect. That if you keep running away from your problems, God is just going to forgive that. He says every coward shall have his part in the lake of fire. So we have no room for cowards in this dispensation of the grace of God. So that's why I'm making this video because people don't seem to understand when it comes to David and Goliath, there was more happening in that story. The Bible is very clear to tell us that Saul and the Israelite army, this is Goliath was coming out for 40 days against them. For 40 days, he came out against them, against their army. And he asked them to send a champion so that they can fight. They're going to fight one on one. Whoever wins, the other people become their slaves. So if the Israelite champion wins, then the Philistines become the Israelite slaves. If the Philistine champion wins, then the, Phil the, then the Israelites become the Philistine slaves, right? So back and forth, vice versa. So when David, when, when the, actually the first thing he spoke before he even engaged in combat with Goliath, because Goliath, David steps up and Goliath is like, he's a little boy. What's he going to do? And Saul, he picks up that same mindset. He, let's not forget, he's the king of Israel. and He's living in fear with his old army. He's supposed to be a chosen king of Israel, and he's living in fear. He's talking, you know, he's worried about what Goliath is, how tall he is, how loud he's talking, his big weapon. Bro, what is what is that? You're the anointed king of Israel. God has done all these things in your life over these last few years, and you're scared to fight his enemy? That's, that's blaspheming the name of God. So I want to show you something important. It's not just that David decided to fight Goliath. It's that David was joined with God's spirit. So the same way in the New Testament that it tells us that he who is in Christ is one spirit with him. So if you're in Christ, if you are a believer and you've been baptized with God's spirit, you are one spirit with God, which means you share spirits. The Holy Spirit that's within you is the same Holy Spirit that's within God. So you share spirits. It's the same way when we pray in tongues, when you speak in tongues, you're using that ability to be one spirit with God and you're praying whatever the spirit is praying. So you're not just saying intelligible languages and intelligible sounds. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is already praying for you often. You're just connecting. You're just emptying out your flesh and connecting to the Spirit and praying what He's already praying. It just comes out in those unintelligible languages because it is a heavenly language. But the Holy Spirit is always praying for the believer. So when you join with Him, you're basically doing what He's doing. So look at it from that perspective of David and Goliath. God is looking for someone to partner with on this side of the earth for his will to be done because God hates people that blaspheme his name. God hates people who think that they are above him. God hates people that think they are arrogant and that they don't, they're not under the blessing or the, or the, um, the authority of him. We see this with Pharaoh. Pharaoh talked crazy to God and what happened to him? The 10 plagues. We saw the king of Assyria talk crazy to God. What happened to him? He was destroyed along with his empire and his kingdom. We saw the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar talk crazy to God. What happened to him? God set him outside for seven years under the dew of heaven. He, you know, had all kind of animalistic qualities and he lost his mind. And he lost his mind up until the time that he said, God is real. He acknowledged that God, the God of Israel was real. And that he was doing all these things in Nebuchadnezzar's life. Until then, he was still outside having those animalistic tendencies and losing his mind. He couldn't even be a king for those years. Because he was so out of his mind. Because he rejected that God was God. So that's what God was doing. That's what God is doing in this Old Testament. Same time period, right? So in the time of David and Goliath, God is always looking for someone to partner with. So when you become one spirit with God, the anger that God has already experienced. Because God is, God is mad. Make no mistake, God is mad at Goliath. Because Goliath is blaspheming his holy name. And God is also angry with Israel because they're not standing up. They're not doing anything. They're just sitting there cowering in fear. God don't need any more cowards. So what he goes and chooses David because David is what? David is a man after God's own heart, a.k.a. David knows how to be one in spirit with God. 
He knows how to feel what God feels, have compassion for what God has compassion for, how to fight for what God fights for. So when David was watching the sheep, God saw David watching the sheep. And when the bear and the lion came to take David's sheep, what did David do? He chased them down. He had a club and he clubbed them to death because that's what God sees. That's a shepherd that cares for his sheep. That's why Jesus used that same analogy in the gospel when he says, I am the good shepherd. When a hireling, he says, when a wolf comes after the sheep, I don't abandon the sheep. But a hireling or a, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, when, when their sheep is threatened, they run off and leave the sheep and the sheep get scattered. So he says, I'm the good shepherd. I do the opposite. I fight for my sheep. And old tips coming back to David. That's all he did. He became one in spirit with God. He became one in spirit. Before the dispensation of the Holy Spirit to all believers, David knew how to become one in spirit with God. That's how he was a man after God's own heart. So he's a man after God's own heart. God is looking for someone to enact his will upon the earth. The Israelites, he can't use them because they're all cowering in fear. So David comes up. And he doesn't say, I come to you in the power of David. He says, I come to you in the power of the living God. Because he knows that God is angry at what Goliath is doing. David was so one in spirit with God that when he heard the Philistine blaspheming him, he couldn't even take it. He couldn't even sit there and hear the man talk crazy. David was, he didn't even go there to go to war. He went there to deliver sandwiches to his brothers. But him hearing that and him being one in spirit with God and hearing that got him angry because he had connected with God's spirit. And God's spirit wanted to punish that Philistine for what he was doing and what he was saying. But none of them could be used to do it. So he had to find this young kid, 12 years old, that's a man after God's own heart, to just happen to be coming across the battle lines, doing something completely different. But him just hearing those evil words being spoken about his God, him being one in spirit with God, he decided to partner with God. And the rage and the wrath that God wanted to pour out on Goliath, he needed someone to partner with so that he can have his will established on earth. Now, I'm not saying that God needs anybody, any human, because he doesn't. But that's just the way he's chosen to manifest himself since we've been here. He's always partnered with the human. You can look at Noah. He partnered with the human to save the humans and to not have to start the whole world over. He partnered with Abraham to allow the purposes of God to come to pass, which was the Israelite, the nation, and all the stuff that went on with that. God is always looking for someone to partner with on earth to do what he is doing. But the only way that we can be in line with God is to know his will. And to know his will, you have to be one in spirit with him and submit to the Holy Spirit. Not just have it in here, have it in you, but to submit to the Holy Spirit. That's how we pray in tongues. That's how we speak in tongues. So in that same instance, David became one with the Holy Spirit. He picked up the stones and he attacked Goliath. But he didn't attack Goliath in his own strength. He attacked Goliath in the strength of God because he was one in spirit with him. And that's how the giant Goliath was defeated. So when it comes to these videos and you're talking about people being possessed with demons and, and, and having demonic tendencies and all these different things, there's two things I tell you. It's not bad to notice the signs of demonic possession or demonic um, oppression. However, what are you supposed to do as believers? Number one, you're supposed to pray for those people that they be set free, that God delivers them. If, 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 if that's too much for you or if your faith is stronger than that because any baby believer can pray for somebody. Any baby believer can pray for somebody. But the next step is, how about you and your faith and you being baptized with the Holy Spirit? Why don't you cast the demon out? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Also, I've given you power over all the enemy. And you shall trample over snakes and scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm you. So if these are real demons that are in your mother, your father, your grandma, your co-workers, why don't you cast them out? We have to stop raising up a generation of Elijah's that's going to cower when the battle comes. Elijah was a great prophet, but that's one of his worst moments. We got to stop raising up cowards. Jesus was not a coward. He didn't run from any demon, ever. So why are we talking about Elijah when it comes to demons? We need to be talking about Jesus, the king, the shepherd, the good shepherd. That when, when his sheep are threatened, he goes to war. So when you become one with God's spirit, you go to war on his behalf. And he fights the battle. He just needs a human vessel to agree with that. 
And that's all David did. But that's all I got for you guys today. Just a new perspective on David and Goliath. Let me know if you received that. If there was, you know, any conviction, anything that happened. And um, as well as leave any comments inside the comment section, prayer requests, anything like that. I just was sitting here and I was thinking about that after I watched, you know, I look, look, looked at a little bit of that video. And I just wanted to put that out there because I'm like, this needs to be addressed. But um, outside of that, you guys be blessed in Jesus' name.